Hello and welcome to this short tutorial where I'm going to try and explain how to enable your phone for debugging so that you can uh, run your apps on the device while you are developing them so instead of using the emulator now you can also use your devices uh, this can be a lot faster definitely and uh, you get more of a sense of how your app will actually look and perform on a device so first thing you need to do is enable USB debugging on your device on on the phone tablet or whatever so to do this it depends on the version of Android you have on the device so so for Android 2.3 you need to go uh, press go to your home screen press the menu key then choose settings then choose applications and then choose development and on development you find an op a checkbox that says USB debugging once you enable that you get a little like a warning screen just choose OK and now your phone is enabled for debugging you can also choose stay awake which prevents the screen from from sleeping while you are debugging so it's kind of useful you don't have to keep uh, unlocking the screen all the time so they change this in ice cream sandwich now you have to go to settings go to applications development and then uh, check the USB debugging option so uh, it's a little bit different just the uh, location has changed a little bit now strangely enough on Android sorry 4.2 they change this completely to make it quite bizarre you have to go to settings go to your phone details where there's like a lot of information about the Android version you're running and then f find the build number of your phone of your Android version for example here it's J O something and you have to tap it seven times this will sort of unlock a secret menu in which you can enable USB debugging so if you're having trouble finding this just Google I mean Google is everything just Google how to enable USB debugging on whatever Android version you have or whatever phone model you have you you'll find some help there's a lot of great uh, forums out there you can find some help on that so after that you need to have the appropriate drivers on your machine so that uh, your your computer can talk to your phone successfully so unfortunately depending on which phone you have how to get the drivers varies and, and also which operating system you have I, I, I only use Windows so I'm gonna speak for Windows so if you have a Samsung phone it's pretty simple just you need to install Kai's Kai's is the Samsung desktop management phone management software so it syncs and backups and backs up your phone and and also installs the drivers so just go to the Samsung Kai's website download the appropriate version and install that first before connecting your phone and once you connect your phone you should see one of those installing drivers screens and that will complete successfully so my phone is an Alcatel OT995 uh, it's so I need to get the Alcatel desktop management software which also contains the drivers if I want to use uh, my phone for development just gonna google that Alcatel T995 uh, I know it's this one it's the official Alcatel website now some uh, unfortunately they don't really a lot of manufacturers don't tell you how to get the drivers I mean it's not immediately obvious so I'm going to download here Alcatel Android Manager and th uh, there's nothing obvious here that says this includes the drivers so you know you have to figure these things out sometimes so I'm just gonna download that and install it right so I'll be back when that finishes okay so that's completed I'm gonna launch the installation mm -hmm. install 
install Uncontail Android Manager, installing the drivers, which is what we want actually. Nothing too shocking here, standard installation stuff. Oh. These tutorials always take a lot longer than I than I expect them to. I don't know. There's a lot of variation I guess. Well, every every device is doing its own thing so can be difficult to give general advice but Google, Google is your friend, just Google everything and you'll be fine right uh, just about to finish here finito question complete so now the drivers should be in there gonna plug in my phone here and see what happens uh, yeah nice for the sound nothing is happening uh-huh stalling drivers click that missed it Look at that, and you need to see, you'll see that it's trying to find the. Oops. Yep. So found everything. Excellent. That, and now you're basically you're you're ready to deploy to the device and we'll do that in a second now some some phones I've used they actually come with the drivers on the phone so you only need to connect the phone and it sort of automatically pulls the drivers from the device and uh, that's pretty nice so again here if you're having trouble finding drivers for your particular uh, phone do a google search like here uh, someone is struggling to find drivers for windows 7 someone uh, immediately posted a link with the with the insta installation file which installs the HTC, the appropriate HTC driver so you know you have to just look for these things and also windows 8 is a uh, might be a bit more difficult because uh, a lot of manufacturers maybe don't have or official support for Windows 8 yet so again do a search you'll find a lot of help and once once you have uh, successfully installed your drivers then you're ready to deploy your application to the phone and this is the the same procedure you would use for for deploying to an emulator and I will demonstrate here in just a second so my phone is plugged in uh, launch Eclipse as usual we're just gonna wait for that to start up I'm gonna skip the wait alright so our Eclipse has started here we have a hello world app and just as you would for an emulator I usually go the right click route here right click on the project run as Android application to churn away for a few seconds and hopefully ah now this is one of the annoying things that can happen it automatically start an emulator even though so even though you have a phone connected so it doesn't it doesn't give you that screen where it asks what do you want to do start an emulator or whatever so I'm just gonna try and close that as soon as I can and what you do what you need to do to fix this is right click here again run as and then instead of Android application choose run configuration 
and here uh, you go to the target and you see here it has selected uh, automatically pick compatible device but I, uh, I'm gonna choose always prompt to pick a device so depending on what you're doing either option can be the best for you ah, and, and here right now also they have a new option here that you can launch on on multiple devices and uh, emulators so before you couldn't do this now you can run several emulators I mean if your computer can handle it because these emulators are very heavy and uh, you can connect several devices and launch simultaneously to all of them so that's pretty great if you're testing example on a phone and a tablet or on several devices I'm, I'm gonna choose always prompt to pick device here I'm gonna try to oh so you see it launched on my emulator successfully that's pretty cool I'll try to kill that again can be a bit unresponsive with these emulators you can see my computer is struggling anyway forget that back here always prone to pick device you can apply or run it and now it to ask me to to pick my device now unfortunately I haven't plugged it in I see here so let me just plug that in right so I'm just gonna plug in my device A few seconds to get recognized there it appears as such now you can see this is like a fake serial number sometimes it appears like this sometimes it appears with the actual model number of the phone Alcatel something something so this is a 2.3 device I choose OK and in the in the console here remember again you should be on Android you can see what's happening and I'm looking at the device right now the hello world app has appeared on my device All right. now some neat things you can do here if you go to the top right here to the DDMS perspective or if you don't see that DDMS here it's in the windows window open perspective DDMS and you can see your device here if you have uh, multiple devices or devices and emulators you'll see them here and depending on which one you want to work with just make sure it's selected because if you want to see the log, log, log cat of a particular device has to be selected here otherwise it can get confusing sometimes sometimes you have the wrong device selected and then you don't see anything and see what, what's going on but anyway that's that so I have that selected I can take screenshots of the device so this is important when you finally want to deploy to the Android market you need to submit screenshots so you can see this is my app running on the device so it's an actual screenshot from the device let me switch to our, our converter app if you watch the other tutorials we had a converter app so I have launched the converter app now and then you have to refresh you can see this is the current uh, visible screen on my device I just enter some numbers there, refresh yep. press convert refresh so and to save save the image just go save and it will save to you can you can choose where you want to save your image copy you know copy and paste it into photoshop or whatever uh, in case this image comes out weird sometimes like it gets the orientation all screwed up then you use the rotate thing to get it the right way rotate a couple of times sometimes uh, I had a device where it always appears upside down so you have to rotate twice to get it right anyway that's that there's a bunch of other features here which are a little over, over my head you can explore the files on the device 
depending on where the file is you might be able to to extract the file from the device onto the computer or the other way around so this pull a file from device push a file to the device uh, you can also de delete the file but this depends you know what type of permission the file has so, so on and so forth right so that is it for launching your oh oh, oh, oh one more thing one more thing once you have launched an app either to a device or to the emulator an APK is generated so an APK is the the installation file of Android so it's like almost think of it like an EXE on Windows technically different but the same conceptually the same thing so the APK is the thing you can you can give to other people to install on their devices now uh, to install APKs which are not from the Android market you need to enable unknown sources in your on your phone so again you, you go into the settings uh, applications something something enable unlo unknown sources uh, so uh, anyway so if you go to the back to Java here so this is my my project folder if I go to the actual folder location on my computer in your workspace so this is test if you go to the bin folder you see that there's a test APK here so this APK was generated when you launch to the emulator or to the device automatically this is an, an, an unsigned APK which means basically you can't upload it to the Android market you can only use this like f to distribute o on your own because it doesn't have the developer signature yet which hopefully will come to in some future tutorial right so you can do whatever you want with this you can you know copy this to your device like copy it to the SD card and then on your device uh, use one of those file explorer applications the launch the file and it will ask you to install and so on and so forth Right, so that's it. That's really it, I think, now. Right, happy coding.